In part 4 of this video series, I'm going to talk about the diagnosing part for neck pain according to the KNGF guideline 2016. Hi and welcome back to Physio Tutors. If you haven't watched the first three parts of this video series, make sure to watch these videos first and then come back to this part. Due to the fact that the treatment for grade 3 neck pain is different from grade 1 or 2, your first step during physical examination is to in or exclude neurological symptoms if your patient mentioned any of them during your patient history taking. So the first thing you should do is to examine your patient's biceps and triceps reflex, test different dermatomes of the arm and hand for changes in sensibility and evaluate different myotomes in your patient's arm and hand for diminished muscle strength. To confirm your hypothesis of grade 3 neck pain, you should perform the Spurling's test and or the traction or distraction test. If any of these two tests are positive, you can regard grade 3 neck pain as probable. If there was no mentioning of neurological symptoms during patient history taking and you found no signs during your neurological examination, you can choose to do the upper limb tension test for the nervous medianus and the brachial plexus to exclude grade 3 neck pain. To watch a video for the ULTT, click on the link in the top right corner. If this test is negative, you can definitely rule out grade 3 neck pain. During further examination, you want to assess the impaired body region and the biomechanical, physiological and anatomical structures that can be involved. So this can be the examination of the cervical and thoracic spine, the shoulder girdle and joints. One part can be to evaluate each segment on range of motion, direction of movement, resistance against movement and the end feel. The second part can be to look for movements that provoke or reduce pain and radiation. The guideline also recommends to assess different muscles that surround the affected area. You want to assess them on muscle length, elasticity and feel, sensibility during contraction and stretch and their tonus. At last, it is recommended to test the coordination, strength and endurance of the deep neck flexors with the help of the deep neck flexor endurance test. You can watch a video about how to perform this test by a click on the icon in the top right corner. The only clinometric tools that the guideline recommends are the numeric pain rating scale to evaluate the average pain your patient suffers from during the course of 24 hours as well as the PSC scale to assess the impairments in daily living. This should be done at the beginning of the treatment and at the end, while it has to be noted that we are only talking about an improvement or a deterioration with a difference of at least two points on these scales. Other clinometric tools like the neck disability index, for example, might be used according to the therapist's own opinion. Due to the fact that the validity of different imaging techniques like X-rays, MRI, CT scans and ultrasound is only moderate, and that a lot of false positive degenerative changes can be found in the healthy population, the use thereof is not advised. Okay, this was part 4 of our KNGF neck pain guideline series. Make sure to click on the video right next to me to continue with the analysis part. As always, I hope you like this video and you give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and follow us on Facebook, Instagram or physiotutors.com. I will see you in the next video. Bye.